Uh, Food Babe has come on now twice on InfoWars and given us information, released information that very quickly went viral and had a, an immediate effect on the food suppliers. It's very hard to get information about what's in your food. They don't want you to know. And of course, in a GMO uh, Supreme Court case uh, not too long ago, we had a nine to nothing Supreme Court decision that essentially, I believe, went very much the wrong way. Today, we had another landmark Supreme Court decision about uh, Hobby Lobby and whether or not they can force people to do things that are against the religion. Of course, Hobby Lobby and this other company, this uh, Conestoga uh, Woodworks a Mennonite company, they are very closely held companies. They're essentially individual businesses. They're not publicly traded corporations, uh, but they're trying to tell people that they could not exercise their freedom of religion. And what I find most interesting about the Supreme Court decision is the minority opinion that we see written by Justice Ginsburg. She says that this decision is a startling breath that would allow corporations to opt out of any law they judge incompatible with their sincerely held religious beliefs. Well, why shouldn't we be the judges of what our sincerely held religious beliefs are? Who's supposed to be the judge of that? Ginsburg, the Supreme Court? We have the right to make our own decisions about what our religious beliefs are and how we're going to exercise that. Fortunately, in this case, they tried to shut down these two businesses, destroy them. In the case of Hobby Lobby, because it was a large corporation, a large company that was closely held by a family, they put $1.3 million a day fines against them. They would have shut down that business. These people stood up for their rights, fought all the way to the Supreme Court, one today. And that's a lesson for all of us. We all need to stand up for our rights. I'm just amazed at what the uh, dissenting opinion said. She went on to say that Congress enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act to serve a far less radical purpose. In other words, the First Amendment is too radical. When the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law, Justice Ginsburg and others believe, hey, we're going to make the laws, and we're going to tell you what your religious beliefs are. We're going to be right back after the break. We have some interesting news out of Hong Kong and how that parallels American elections. Right after the break, and we're going to have Dr. Stanley Monteith joining us to talk about health issues and what's happening at the border, what that tells us about the New World Order's global plans. I wanted to cover what's going on in Hong Kong right now. You know, there's just the end of the last week, they had an election. Uh, they had a referendum on democracy, and mainline China, mainland China was not very happy with that. Uh, now, to understand what's going on here, remember that Hong Kong was under British rule for a very long time. It was a former colony of the uh, British, and when they turned them back to the Chinese, they did this with the understanding that it was going to be set up as what they call a SARS area, a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China. They were going to have their own executive, legislative, and judiciary branches, and they were also going to have their elections. Now, that's what they were voting on. Are they going to have free and open elections? And I think it has an interesting parallel to what happens in America right now. Now, the AP reported Beijing has pledged to allow Hong Kongers to elect their next leader, but, but they balked at letting them nominate their own candidates saying that they need to be vetted by a Beijing-friendly committee. Does that sound familiar? That sounds familiar to me as somebody who's been watching the political landscape for a long time. That's exactly the system we have here in America. We have this overreaching governance here that is two parties that really are phony opposition, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They really stand on the same side of most issues, including the collapse of the border including the war on drugs, including the militarized industrial complex, the destruction of our civil liberties on issue after issue after issue. There's no difference between them. Can we get a different candidate? No, they've got to be vetted by the Republican Party and the Democrat Party, just like Beijing has to, Democrat, has to vet the uh, candidates for people in Hong Kong. They said that uh, they're not going to let them nominate their own candidates. And they spoke back against it in a state-run uh, paper in mainland China. The Global Times newspaper said the idea that these people would be able to choose their own candidates was, quote, mincing ludicrous. 
<laughs> missing ludicrous. They have a, a way of uh, turning a phrase, I guess. They also called it other things like an illegal farce, and they accused activists of sowing hatred. Yeah, where have we heard that before? They've done everything except call it racist. Of course, those are always the way that they attack everything. Beijing is only going to allow candidates who love China. Look, if you can't choose who the candidates are, if they rig the system, and our system is every bit as rigged as the system that mainland China wants to put over on the Hong Kong people, if you have to go through and do special ballot access as an independent candidate or as a third party that the main parties never have to do, that's a tremendous burden. Then even if you clear that hurdle, you can't participate in the debates. They even exclude people like Ron Paul and a two-term governor uh, from the debates and the GOP. Then you have the corruption that's associated with the election itself. It's an incredibly corrupt system that we have in America. A lot of people got a glimpse of the dark underbelly of our electoral system in the last cycle when they saw how the Republican Party was rigging and controlling the elections, especially for those that were not outright primaries, but where they had caucuses, because it was much more difficult for them to pretend that uh, the voters weren't voting a particular way. That's the kind of corruption that we have in America. Far more subtle, far more dangerous than just saying, you're not going to do that in the public. The Chinese are pretty upfront about it, but we have a much more dangerous group of people running this country. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm going to be joined in just a moment by Dr. Stanley Monteith. Now, of course, he has a program, Radio Liberty. You can find that at RadioLiberty.com. He's written many books, one of them, Brotherhood of Darkness. Uh, Dr. Monteith has been a practicing orthopedic surgeon uh, in Santa Cruz for 35 years. He led the fight against organized medicine in California to address the AIDS ep epidemic as a medical issue rather than a civil rights issue. I think there's some parallels to what's going on at the border with that as well. And he actually won. His public health approach to the HIV epidemic was eventually accepted by the California Medical Association. Dr. Monti, thank you for joining us. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. I wanted to talk to you about the big picture because there's something happening here with the collapse of the border, with the consolidation, with NAFTA essentially becoming a fact after it's been on the books for 20 years. We heard uh, uh, General Petraeus last week say that, uh, hey, you know, NAFTA has uh, been on the books for 20 years and what comes after America? Well, that's simple, North America. And then we heard essentially the same thing from Nancy Pelosi this last weekend at the border. She said, we need to understand that we have a community here that just happens to have a border running through it, you know, a border that essentially in her mind is really no more than, let's say, the border between uh, Texas and Oklahoma, for example. So they believe that they created a unified uh, North American state just as they're doing this uh, regional consolidation all over the world. And now they're making that a fact, aren't they? There's, there's much more to this than meets the eye with just a quote-unquote crisis that they see as an opportunity, isn't there, Dr. Monteith? Monteith. People have to be able to see things clearly. And everything is done to keep us confused. And basically, as you look and see what's going on in the world, there's confusion. I mean, what's going on in the Middle East? Why, why are all these conflicts over there? And, and why are we financing this ISIS, ISIS, you know, group, the Shia group on one side, I mean, the Sunni group on one side, and we're funding the Shia group on the other. In other words, we're funding... So the Shia and the Sunni, it doesn't make any sense. Right. And the same thing is, of course, we're funding the terrorists in Syria, the terrorists in Syria, who are killing Christians. Why would we be funding the terrorists for killing Christians, raping the Christian women? They've killed over 160, 170,000 uh, civilians there in Syria, and we're funding it. How do you make any sense out of what's going on? How do you make any sense out of what's going on? as far as the border is concerned. And all these little children from all over South America and Central America suddenly deciding that on their own, the two-year-olds deciding on their own that they want to come to America so they can get an education. <laughs> well, basically, there is a plan. There is a master plan. It's been around for thousands of years. The plan is to bring about a one-world government, a one-world financial system, and a new 
one world religion. That's the plan goes. You can trace it all the way back to Nimrod. And if we had time, we'd go down to Prometheus and Plato and Socrates and Aristotle and certainly Alexander the Great, uh, who died trying to bring about this one world government. But right now, of course, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're seeing this thing manifested. And people don't understand. We talk about what our government is doing. And it is not our government. Basically, we have two governments. We have the, the government <clears throat> that we elect, you know, congressmen, senators. And we have our courts. That we have a president. But we have the real government. Uh, and the real government controls both sides. They control the Republicans. They control the Democrats. They rake elections. You cannot get an honest election in America with an electronic voting machine. Because any one of them can be fixed. And you never know. You know, you can get an honest election. I said it with paper ballots. Because you never know whether these elections are rigged or not. But we go to the polls every four years. We vote for the candidate of their choice. And we're in the mess we are today. Uh, but what people must understand is there's this very, very small group. There are not very many of them. Oh, but they have their people placed in the military. And you will never find, for instance, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who is either not a member of the Council on Foreign Relations or uh, is supposed to be affiliated with them and, and talking to them. And you can go up in your Google account and Google in, you know, how the chief, chief of the, uh, pardon me, the uh, head of the, um, um, of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Council on Foreign Relations, you'll find the relationship. They control the six major banks. The six major banks control 67% of all the finances in the United States. That's J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. They control 67% of all the financial assets, and they all tie into the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderbergers, Trilateral Commission. And, of course, because they control the wealth, they control the major corporations, and most of the major, 100 major corporations, uh, they certainly buy and sell our judges. And if you don't think for one minute that uh, the current chief justice of the Supreme Court is for sale or some of the others are for sale, you're incredibly naive. That's and very true. You know, you know judges, but Dr. Monteith, just before, the, uh, just before you came on, we were talking about the trial balloon that the uh, central banks uh, have floated. And this is an organization that... Uh, uh, represents the central banks. They were talking about how we're getting into a dangerous bubble. I think what they're doing is they're floating out there a trial balloon that we're going to have some kind of an implosion, which very easily they could be the pen that bursts the balloon that they're complaining about. And we've seen that as a technique many times, haven't we? Yes, and I think, you know, well, of course, I'm not an economist, but I do know some very, very smart people and the people that I really put my confidence in, and so these smart people are saying that probably something serious is going to happen either later this year or early in 2015. Now, I'm not making things that's going to happen, but uh, these people are a lot smarter than I am, and they really are saying, get out of the market, get to things in the financial situation, because of course, this whole financial house of cards can come down. Yes, well, no, things really haven't... Thing for people to understand is that these people who control our government are using the financial and military power of the United States to bring about a world government. And that is why we have 800 to 1,000 military bases throughout the world. Does anybody in their right mind honestly believe that we need 800 to 1,000 foreign military bases to protect the United States? This is why we have our troops stationed in 130 nations. Does anybody in their right mind believe we should need troops in 130 nations to protect the United States or an embassy in Baghdad with over 10,000 people in it to protect the United States? I mean, That's right. We, we have our troops permanently stationed in Sydney in Germany, 45,000 troops, 35,000 troops permanently stationed in Japan. 25,000 troops permanently stationed in Sydney in South Korea, about 10 or 11,000 permanently stationed in England and in Germany, and in Italy. Basically, we occupy the world, and until people understand this, we're not defending America. We are pushing this globalist dream. But behind this are powerful spiritual forces, and that's what most people who talk about these things miss. They do not understand that this is an age-old program. It's been around for several thousand years. It's coming to a climax right now. We look and see things unfolding before our eyes, and we think this is what's happening. This is 
simply a manifestation of this age-old plan, and we're moving rapidly towards what I think is going to be the destruction of, of America, the destruction of civilization, as we know. The First World War, they killed 22 million. The Second World War, they killed 60 to 70 million. And they're planning on a Third World War. We know what they're planning. And I believe hundreds of millions, if not more, are going to die before this is over. Yes, absolutely. You know, what you're talking about in terms of arming both sides, feeding all this revolution. We just found out last week, at the end of the week, that Obama said he was going to send half a billion dollars to ISIS. Today we see ISIS is crucifying eight anti-Assad fighters in Syria. So here they are. They're supposedly opposed to Assad, and yet they're crucifying anti-Assad fighters. And then this is the same group who's crucifying these other rebels that Obama is going to send half a billion dollars that he announced. Who knows how much money they've given these people covertly. But that just goes to show that the real goal is continued warfare, continued chaos, continually taking everything down so they can destroy everything, so they can rebuild it as a one-world government, doesn't it? You're absolutely right. And they know that the only way that they're going to get the people of the world to go along with this is to have some terrible, horrible disaster. And I really believe it's coming, whether it's coming this year or next year or the year after that. I'm not going to give you a date, but I, I, I think that there's going to be a major economic collapse here very soon. And when World War III comes, I do not know, but I know they're planning on it. And with this, we're talking about not, uh, you know, uh, 50 or 100 million, but hundreds of millions of people that die. People say, we can't happen, but I really believe everything points we're going to have a major nuclear war. And if you just simply look what's going on over there in the Middle East, I mean, you've got China, I suddenly has nuclear weapons, and, and Russia has nuclear weapons. Pakistan has nuclear weapons. I believe Iran has nuclear weapons. I believe that Saudi Arabia has access to nuclear weapons. They don't already have them. Israel has nuclear weapons. And uh, the, the average individual really doesn't understand the implications. Well, Dr. Monteith, I think it's very clear that the Obama administration and the uh, people at the Pentagon are really trying to bring back the Cold War when we look at what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, Dr. Monteith is a physician and someone who deeply cares about liberty, who also understands what the big picture is. As we see the massive contradictions and hypocrisy at what is being done at the border versus what's being done to Americans within the country. As we talked about yesterday on the show, as you see Texas towns losing, going bankrupt, essentially, and losing their security, we see that the federal government is doing nothing about that. They're not sending any aid to those towns. Instead, what they're doing is they're sending half a billion dollars to ISIS, ISIS, and to Syrian rebels. We see that Obama is sending the CIA to the UK to probe the terrorist breeding grounds there, and yet the borders are completely open. At the same time, they talk about the dignity of children and people who are crossing the border. They offer us in the United States within our borders, at our airports, at our bus stations, train stations, on our highways, they offer us no dignity. Instead, we get the TSA pat down. This is all being done by the same organization. Homeland Security has control of internal security, is federalizing the police at the same time that they stand down at the border. Dr. Monteith, do you think this kind of contradiction, this kind of hypocrisy, has a chance of waking people up? Well, I think people have to be able to see things clearly. I mean, uh, so much that goes on doesn't make any sense. I mean, why would we be allowing all these children coming across the border, and then when they cut across the border and sending them back again, we're looking for places to send where they can be looked after until they can be put into homes? Why would we be doing that? Because the major agenda of the subversive group that controls our government. And basically, nobody wants to say this. There's a subversive group that controls our government with it. As an intent, hatred of America wants to destroy the sovereignty of this nation. These people should be tried, arrested, and then sent to prison for their crimes against humanity. But this subversive group of 
basically, uh, you know, Sunday uh, is goal is to uh, unite all of North America. In other words, uh, unite Mexico, unite the United States and Canada and the United States of North America. It is part of this subversive plan to bring about a world government, the United States of Europe, a United States of North America, the United States of Central America, the United States of South America. But the average American, the average American just wants to live and be allowed to live. He doesn't understand this subversive group that kills people, they, or they have their assassins. And I know anybody who has any questions, I have a four CD set you get from my ministry. It's called Debbie and Assassins. We're actually interviewing, you can actually hear my interviews with government assassins who've been assigned to kill people. Well, you talk about government assassins. We just had an article that uh, came out yesterday in the New York Times where they're talking about these Blackwater mercenaries in Iraq's threatening State Department investigators and saying, this is Iraq. I can kill you if I want to, and nobody can or will do anything about it. And when the investigator went to the embassy staff there, they said they backed up Blackwater. These are mercenaries who are being paid billions of dollars and told that they can kill anybody that they wish, including State Department investigators. And shortly after that, they killed 17 Iraq civilians in a city square. Yeah, but people ignore the fact that they kill people here. This is a four CD set. You can actually hear my, uh, my interview with or with a, a two uh, uh, government assassins, and one of the men who actually tracked down the assassin, who was actually paid to kill General Patton. Mm. I mean, uh, we're talking about people being killed in America. This is not imaginary. Yes. And anybody would like to get that more CD stuff, we put a plug in 1 800 Dr. Monteith, we were just talking before the break. You had just brought up Cloward and Piven, of course, the 1960s uh, social scientist who essentially came up with a plan to accelerate the economic collapse of the country through a rapidly expanding welfare system, doing it through the Democrat Party, they suggested. And as always, and this is always a plan that we saw this in the movie uh, the last Captain America, where you've got the uh, villain coming out and saying, uh, we have to destroy the society before we can rebuild it the way we want it to be. And that is the design of all of these globalist social planners to essentially destroy society so they can then rebuild it the way they want. And the way they want is essentially a feudal system where they control and own everything. And not too many people are left. Uh, those who are left don't have any say-so. They are pushed back into a kind of feudalistic uh, society. Wouldn't you say, Dr. Monteith? That's exactly what is intended. And, of course, the logical thing is, if you're going to have this welfare state, why well, you ought to raise taxes. Well, they're not raising the taxes. In fact, half the people in America don't pay any taxes, and the other half, uh, they pay taxes, but... Basically, we're going behind uh, at least a trillion dollars a a year. Basically, over the last ten years, when George W. Bush became president, and that was in 2000. Uh, let's see, we actually uh, it was 5.7 trillion. Today, it's uh, 17 trillion. Basically, we this thing is just completely out of control. We're going behind a trillion dollars a year. And that's what they'll admit to. And one of these days, this whole thing is going to collapse because other countries are going to back away from the American dollar. And I really do believe that this is exactly what is planned. When it's going to happen, I can't tell you. I'm amazed that they've been able to keep it going as long as they can. But increasingly, other countries do not want to 
actually utilize the American dollar in trade, and they're turning to other possible currencies, the Chinese currency, a combination of Russian and Chinese currency. What it's going to be, I don't know, but with this is going to be the destruction of the value of probably of 30 to 50 percent of the value of our currency and the impoverishment of our people. And I think we're going to see suddenly much lower living standards. I oh, also yes. think we're going to see increasing state of violence and unrest in this country. And in one manner or another, I do really believe they're going to create social unrest and violence. And I really fear this. Uh, and we're bringing all of these young children in. Why? Because it appeals to me that who can be against children? Who mm -hmm. can be against helping a woman with a little uh, two-year-old children who want a better life? Oh, if we don't stop the invasion of our country, this country is going to be destroyed. And the thing is, the, you know, Doctor, is going right along with it. Dr. Monteith, it was just this weekend that Nancy Pelosi said, I, I just wish I could take all these children home with me. Well, there's a reason that she can't take them home with her. She couldn't take care of all those children. And we can't take care of all the world's poor children. Collapsing the border is going to collapse our country. And she knows that. She knows that she can't take them home and care for them individually. She doesn't have the financial resources. And she knows that our country doesn't have the financial resources to care for everybody as well. There's many things that could be done to help these children. Many of the problems that they have are problems that we have created with our war on drugs. But so many people, especially Christians, will look at this and say, well, I think we just ought to help all these children, not looking at what the bigger picture is. You're talking about not knowing when this is going to happen. I don't know if you're familiar with the works of uh, Strauss and Howe, the fourth turning. They had predicted 10 years before the bankers bubble burst back in 2007, 2008, they had written a book back in 1998. They said, we don't know exactly what form it's going to take, but there's going to be some kind of a major economic downturn in about 10 years. And it did, in fact, happen in about 10 years. They've looked at history going all the way back to the mid 1400s and saying, this is a repeating cycle. About every year, every, every 80 years, there's a major turning in society that's based on generations coming of age. And when that happens, we have things like the Great Depression and World War II, 80 years prior to that, the Civil War, 80 years prior to that, the Revolutionary War. They're looking at something happening about 2020, 2025. And I think it's very telling that all of these projections that you see coming from the government, they're all about that time. And when I looked at this article that came up uh, yesterday about Fairfax County kindergarten classes, that 40% of those children couldn't speak English. And they started talking about it, about the class of 2026. I think it's very telling that they're bringing in a lot of children that don't have any cultural connection to America, don't have any background, and try to separate them from their families so they can be raised by the state. And it's very hard to get to those young children that are being educated by the state that speak a different language, it's very hard to get to them and get them to understand the foundation and the importance of individual liberty. I think this is Obama's youth corps that's being brought in right now for the events that are going to take place in about five to ten years. What do you think? Well, I think it's happening much sooner than that. Yes. I think if you talk to the young people who are graduating from high school today, they have no loyalty to America. They have no loyalty to God. Uh, they're globalists. People do not understand the purpose of our education it is to uh, destroy the belief in America of our youth. And they don't understand freedom. Uh, they honestly believe that we need an all-powerful state to provide for the people who want to be wonderful. Uh, so I think that this is going on right now. I don't think we have to worry about the future. I think it's going on today. Yes. And an increasing number of young people today uh, are now atheists. Thanks to our schools, an increasing number of people, young people, are global thanks to our schools, and heaven help us. You had mentioned earlier this has been a plan going back to uh, uh, Babylonian times. Uh, we've seen it written in detail, as you mentioned, in Plato's Republic, where he said he wanted children to be raised by the state, even taking it to the extreme of saying that he didn't want any children in his ideal republic to even know who their parents were. So they had no loyalty to anything other than the state. 
It's always been the dream of dictators to educate children to keep them under their control. We've heard so many times from so many different, uh, it's been attributed to so many different dictators, to Hitler, to Stalin, but they all know that if you get a child very early in life and you train them, they're yours for life. And of course, that's what the Hitler Youth were about. I believe that's what Obama's FEMA Corps is about, his uh, Youth Corps. They're always looking for ways to get their hooks into children. And what better way to do this than to bring in a massive amount of children from another country without connections to their the culture that's here, without connections to a family, even speaking another language. I think that's a key part of what's going on right now with this collapse of the border. Yes, but they're doing it in also with the English-speaking children. Yes. Mm -hmm. And basically, the yes. parents don't have any idea because they don't have a chance to talk to their children about how they really feel or how they really believe. Well, I think so, I think, by fact, that we, we can talk about the historical aspects of this. In fact, in preparation for the talk today, I'd actually uh, gone back and read some of the newsletters I wrote uh, April, May, and June of 2000. April, May, and June of 2000. We're talking about, what, 14 years ago. But going back into the whole ideas of Plato, People must understand that Plato was part and parcel of this, just as his predecessor mm -hmm. Socrates and his predecessor Pythagoras were all part and parcel of this move to bring about a one-world government under a ruling leader. And Plato said it exactly right in his book, The Republic. Democracy doesn't work. Democracy doesn't work. And basically that's why he wanted a one ruler. He wanted a an ideal ruler who is going to rule the world. That has always been the plan. That was the plan of Socrates. It was the plan of Plato. It was the plan of Aristotle. And that's, of course, what Alexander the Great was. Alexander was the uh, uh, Aristotle's student, and Alexander uh, you know, died trying to rule the world. And that is exactly what's going on today. Exactly the same movement is afoot. They want a small little group of people to rule the entire world, but now we have such a massive population. They are actively going to have to kill off the vast majority of the people in the world today. And the average individual says, well, that could never happen. And I will tell you, it not only could happen, it is happening. And we can get into the background of the electromagnetic field. We can get into the background of what they're doing as far as our food is concerned. We can get into the background of what they're doing as far as the use of medications are concerned. And basically, we are moving towards a major third world war where I honestly believe that hundreds of millions of people are going to die. The outlook is very, very grim. And yet the average American just wants to be left alone. Unfortunately, they're not going to leave the average American alone. And people are going to have to get involved and start talking and start preparing at least for themselves and their friends for the very, very difficult times that are coming. And they're coming very, very soon. We're not talking about 20 years from now. I think we're talking about a near matter of months or a, a few years at the least. Yes, they certainly are accelerating it. I think that's really what's going on with this, with this collapse at the border. And people need to understand that if we go back and we look at Rex 84, we look at Operation Garden Plot, the conditions that they had laid down for martial law are exactly the kinds of conditions that they themselves, the government, are creating right now at the border. I think that's a very frightening prospect, as well as the idea that they could do a false flag pandemic, uh, not even really a false flag. They could, they could essentially uh, bring that in. We see that uh, diseases are coming across the border. We see that Border Patrol agents are testing positive for many of the diseases that the uh, illegal aliens are bringing across. And as we talked to Border Patrol agents, they were telling us they had contacted the Center for Disease Control, and the Center for Disease Control was not interested at all. Does that surprise you, Dr. Monteith? Not in the least. <laughs> because disease control is part and parcel of the problem. Yes. I fought that for almost a decade with the AIDS epidemic, because they did everything they could to block the use of standard and effective public health measures to stop the epidemic that so far now has killed well over 600,000 people in America, infected another million and a half, and killed millions throughout the world. And it was all unnecessary. In fact, I wrote a book called AIDS, the Unnecessary Epidemic. It was an unnecessary. 
unnecessary epidemic then. It is an unnecessary epidemic today. And But we can thank uh, the doctors who compromised their principles in the Centers for Disease Control uh, for the uh, loss of almost six, of over 600,000 lives in America. And they turned a blind eye to it for political reasons in the same way that they're turning a blind eye to the to that additional risk when they open up the borders for political reasons. Well, I think it's so, so tragic, but the thing is that this, this is a subversive act. Yes. And nobody wants to say that, that we have a subversive element that controls our government. I mean, this is not happening by accident. These people are not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. But the thing is that nobody has the courage to stand up and say, this is criminal activity. It's criminal activity uh, to bring these people into this country. It's criminal activity uh, to block the border patrol people from doing what's logical. And basically, oh, so much of it was well, criminal activity. Do you realize we have over 11 million people on disability today? Federal disability. There is no place in our Constitution where the federal government is defined to provide for people who have a disability. And this is all designed intensely to bankrupt our nation. And believe me, we are going to be going bankrupt very, very soon. And with that, the average person listening to this program, if they have money invested in stocks or in bonds or in annuities or in pensions or anything else tied to the dollar, they're going to lose the significant part of, of everything they've worked their life for. And the average individual has no idea what's going to happen. And when it does happen, I really fear there's going to be distress, there's going to be violence, there's going to be a riot in our streets. Yeah, you know, they, they talk constantly about how fragile our infrastructure is, uh, susceptible to electromagnetic pulses, uh, to terrorist attacks, to any kind of disruption because we have a just-in-time delivery service. And yet people don't realize, most of them, just how fragile our economic system is because it really kind of hangs on the petrodollar. That's one of the reasons why we've been able to run up this astronomical deficit of $17 trillion. No one can even fathom how large that is. And one way they've been able to do it is to uh, have this petrodollar. And yet, look at what the government right now is doing. They're trying to, uh, they're, they're engaging the Russians, they're engaging the Chinese, they're, they're, they're trying to pick a fight, start a, another Cold War, and everything that they're doing is causing them to consider backing away from the petrodollar. And once they do that, you're going to see very rapid economic collapse, just as you will with a massive influx of dependents coming through the border. We're going to be right back with Dr. Stanley Monteith. We're going to continue to talk about what's going on from the 50,000-foot level. What is this all about? Well, of course, it's about consolidating the governments into regional areas, destroying local sovereignty so that they can then consolidate that into a global government. It's about creating economic collapse and continuous war. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I have Dr. Stanley Monteith of RadioLiberty.com on the phone with us. Now, we've been informed that Obama has a speech on immigration that's pending very shortly. Uh, I'm sure he's going to solve everything with some new executive orders. So we're just hanging on what our dear leader is going to tell us. But... Uh, we won't be able to cover that here. You can get an update on that tonight on the nightly news. You can see that at prisonplanet.tv. Support us with a subscription there. Just one subscription lets you share that with up to 10 other people. Get a constant update each night on what's happening, the latest developments, and helps you to wake other people up. You have access to all of Alex Jones's documentaries right there on Prison Planet TV with your subscription, and you can pass that along to other people. And of course, the nightly news will be tonight at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, Dr. Monteith, we were talking about a lot of bad news. You were laying out uh, to everybody what's been going on for a very long time, trying to move towards global government. Let's talk about something positive. You know, we're all Christians. We know that God rules. We've read the back of the book. We know who wins in the long term. What can we do in the short term to protect our families, to protect our country? Well, I think the first, thing, first and most important thing is have a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, because 
we study this, though, once you understand this is a spiritual battle, and what is energizing this whole movement is a long-range spiritual plan that is coming to fulfillment today. So, first of all, you have a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, you would want to go ahead and make all the preparations you can. Try to get other people to understand the spiritual explanation of what's going on. Basically, the thousands of years ago, it was prophesied that the of the geopolitical structure would be lining up just as it is today. Talk of Gog, Magog, I mean, once you begin to understand what these countries are, you begin to see them all fitting into place today. And we know there's going to be, a, first of all, a, a, a war coming before the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. There's going to be a war that will precede that one, and I think that's what we're seeing unfolding today. And what a pretty gratifying thing it is to know that God's predictions are coming to pass. Either the Bible is accurate and prophecy is accurate, or it's not. There's no halfway in between. And the longer I live, the more I watch what's going on, the more convinced I am that God does rule in the affairs of men. That we are actually seeing the fulfillment of those age-old prophecies. Sometimes it's a little hard to, to actually hit this country and that country, but as the events unfold, I think you're going to see that God knew exactly what was going to happen already thousands of years ago. Can we delay this? Perhaps uh, our job is to do our best. Uh, our job is to reach as many people as we can in the time that's allotted to us, and I just hope and pray that what I do and they want the what people who listen to this program do will honor God and bring them closer. It's the only hope we have for ourselves and our families is the realization that God does rule. Yes, I agree. And I think that if we look at uh, biblical prophecies and our takeaway is that we want to uh, sit back passively and wait for it to happen, or we get excited about the fact that, oh, look, things are lining up and uh, I'm going to get raptured out of here. You know, a lot of people said that when Hitler came to power and kind of passively sat back. I'm reminded of what Martin Luther said. He said, if I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I would still plant a tree today. Thank you very much, Dr. Stanley Monteith.